Hello everybody and welcome to the Robata CS YouTube channel. Today let's go over how you can set your Dynamixels firmware for compliant motion. So we're going to be doing this today using a combination of the Dynamixels current based position control mode and the PID control that's available through the Dynamixel firmware. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a graph that we're going to be using in this video to show you the position of the Dynamixel and we're going to reduce the communication interval to one millisecond. So Let's go ahead and open the graph here, and then let's get started with our uh, demonstration. So when you start the graph, you're, you're going to see that the Dynamixel is going to be reporting its current position. And now let's turn Torque on for the Dynamixel. So the Dynamixel can be uh, set for multiple different behaviors using the parameters in the Dynamixel firmware. And the first thing that we're going to be going over today is how to set the different gains of the current based position control mode. So to limit the force in current based position position control mode, you're going to edit the goal current in the firmware, and that reduces the total amount of force that the Dynamix will use for its motions. So now that we've edited the goal current, uh, let's see how that will behave. So with the goal current reduced, you can see that you can actually move the Dynamixel's position away from its current position, and it will be compliant and then return to the original position. We can change the behavior of how quickly it returns by editing the position P gain, which affects how aggressively it corrects its position. So now we can see the Dynamixel returns more slowly than it did before. For another demonstration, we're going to increase the P gain once again, and we're then going to decrease the position D gain, or I'm sorry, actually increase the D gain. Um, this is going to help us reduce the overshoot that we can see when the Dynamix will returns back to its position. So previously you could see a spike at the top of the line in the graph, and now with the increased D gain, uh, the Dynamix will actually use a break to keep the position from overshooting. So now let's tune this a little bit further. Let's use a slight bit less P gain than before. And you can see we have a very smooth motion curve with just a small amount of tuning in the firmware. So now your Dynamixel is compliant, you can move it away from its position by hand, but you can be assured that it will return to its original position as soon as any obstruction is gone. Thank you for joining us today in the Robotis CS YouTube channel, and I hope this video was informative and uh, helping you learn how you can set the Dynamixel's firmware for compliant motion. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Robotis CS YouTube channel. We hope to see you soon.